Welcome to Money Making Conversation. I am your host, Rashawn McDonald. It is time, like I tell people every week, to stop reading other people's success stories and start writing your own. And I always tell people, you hear people talk about their gifts, they talk about their passion. If you have gifts, leave with them. And don't let your age, friends, family, or coworkers stop you from planning or living your dreams. Interviews I bring on the show is for you. It's celebrities, CEOs, entrepreneurs, and industry decision makers. My next guest is one of my favorites, man. He was on the show about a year and a half ago, Molly Music. He is a gospel artist first and foremost, but who will not be put in a box. He loves the freedom of creating amazing music no matter what the genre is, gospel, R&B, hip hop, or rock, whatever he feels. That's his move. Molly won a Grammy this year for the song Move It On, his hit collaboration with Jonathan Mac Reynolds. He's nominated for three stellar awards this year. He's gotten back on the road because COVID shut everybody down in 2020, but he's getting back out there. Got to make that check. Got to make that check. Since things have started to open up across the U.S. and we'll be announcing new music and new tour dates coming soon, and I'll be the first to put them out there for my man. Please welcome to Money Making Conversation again, Molly Music. How you doing, Molly? Wow, Ms. McDonald, <laughs> how's it going? What an honor, beautiful introduction. Good to be back again. Hey, world, let's get it. Well, the thing about you, the, the, you know, when we talk, man, it was almost, because I have a, I come from a big family, Molly. You know, I'm from Houston, Texas. I have a, six sisters, two brothers. And I felt like I was talking to my younger brother here, man. You know, because, <laughs> you know, you, 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 know you, you got that energy, man. You, 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 you still have unconquered territories that you want to, like, want to, want to, want to make a difference in. But the more important sure. thing is, we always can get boxed in, especially when we do mm-hmm. R&B. People think, oh, you should be doing R&B. You do country. You, you, what you what black? What you doing over in country? You should be over there. And so we're seeing so many walls coming down in our era, in this timeline. Are you feeling that's comfortable for what you're trying to do as well? I do feel that it's effective, mm-hmm. but comfortable is not the word Um, Mm -hmm. it's good for what we want business to do it's good for the spreading of our wings but it's kind of like a a racial conversation you open up the doors to be heard out by a different race and then it gets uncomfortable for Mm -hmm. me just because you start bringing out different issues Mm -hmm. i recently traveled to nashville to do some songwriting with chad lead singer of the rock band christian rock band unspoken Mm -hmm. and it was a challenge for me Mm -hmm. especially coming from soul background gospel background Mm -hmm. but i had to remember i have songs out like gimme gimme Mm -hmm. ready aim impulses Mm -hmm. songs that have rock uh feels for it so man the spreading and the falling of the genres is definitely good i've been watching it happen in hip-hop and other genres for a long time and i'm glad that it's finally made it to gospel well you know interesting but it's about a beat isn't it because when you talk about uh you know because it is like a one three or a two four beat when mm-hmm. you're talking about music when you're talking about r&b beats and you're talking about you're talking about rock beats especially because they can hang right. on notes a lot longer how does that you know because we all know that gospel is driven by emotion and right. and so and so you're the emotionally driven guy and then you go to rock a lot of times it's just driven by sound and if I'm, right. So how do you blend the two to get the results that you want? Molly? Excellent question. Well, they bring me in normally as a lyricist. Mm-hmm. I write lyrics like the enemy comes only to still kill and destroy. Mm-hmm. Coming in with things like that. I said a Christian rock band. One thing about the genre gospel is it is sound. It, it doesn't necessarily have a sound anymore. Of mm-hmm. course, you have. Uh, the Mahalia Jackson. Right. You know, it comes up, you know, you have the, um, I don't know, not, you know, House of Prayer, and that's your House of Prayer. Mm-hmm. You get what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Sound. You have mm-hmm. Baptist music, mm-hmm. um, worship music like Hillsong and stuff like that. If you notice, the music could be anything. Gospel and Christian has now solely based this genre around the content. As long as at some point you say that Jesus Christ is Lord, it could sound like any type of beat right you get what i mean right. so the um our genre is mostly about the edification of god absolutely not necessarily a sound. But, but it is because uh, we just talk amusing that molly okay you know because of the fact that uh when you look at r&b you know like you start naming different artists that, that lie themselves in that whole genre because because when you got the hip-hop and rap it just like tore itself away from r and right. It tore it. This, this is not even R&B. They're not even singing. Okay. They're clearly not singing. Mm-hmm. And then when you get into R&B, you had soul, you know, you had, yeah. you had, the, you Neo had the, soul, 
yeah, all those different genres. So when when you start talking about gospel, I start realizing, man, there are many many layers. When you talk about Mahalia Jackson, you talk about yeah. Kirk Franklin, you talk about Yolanda Tasha Adams, Cubs, you know, Donnie McClurkin, you know, John P. Key and Choir. Right? How did the, and that's a, from a creative standpoint, that's a challenge, huh? Yeah, it could be. But what I noticed while coming up in church is a lot of the creativity came out of one person um, creatively. Like a, you might have had 600 people in Ricky Dillard's choir, but they were all locked on Ricky. Right. And right. everything that would come out of their mouth and the band was something that he probably heard at a coffee table that a few mornings before and taught them. Same with Hezekiah. So mm -hmm. being a praise and worship leader first, I know that you could spend time with God in the car, mm -hmm. tell some vocalists how to part go tell the band and before you know it you're in a high spirit of praise so right, right, a lot right, of the right. big <laughs> ideas can come out of one person um mm -hmm. beethoven had a whole orchestra but it was his music every line so i think it's just um you know just based on who the idea is coming out of and it could be one person even though many, many people are helping you know when i when i look at you molly i always say i have to bring this question to everybody who comes on the show where did it start for you because I, I look at myself and I try to pinpoint, I always tell people I've been doing this since I was 18 years old. When I really mm -hmm. looked at my life, you know, I've been I've been uplifting, I've been creative, I've been a person who who thought differently, just saw I saw a different path to success. I came from a black neighborhood, but I didn't want to die in a black neighborhood. I thought there was yes. more to the world out there. And 18 years old, I was committed to seeing more of that world. So that so I locked that date as important when it really started for me. And then I went mm -hmm. to college, and college changed my life. What did it start for you, Marley Music? Well. I begged my father for Pro Tools, which is a sound or wave recording software mm -hmm. that is about maybe $500 to $600. It requires a, <laughs> a computer, a monitor, a mouse, sound, yes. speakers. I was asking my dad for this at 13 years old. Uh, I, I was laughing because you said five hundred and six hundred dollars. Okay, yeah. then you said thirteen. And I was not, bust out laughing. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> My dad was saying, "Oh, this is not a money making conversation." For this boy to do. <laughs> I said, "You know, I understood." I asked him around thirteen after going to a studio with a friend, and that's how I learned. That's how people get their voice come, to come out of the radio. As a young boy, I'm always hearing mom sing. I'm always hearing. My sister's saying, but I'm like, how do we come out of the radio like Luther Vandross? Right. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and I didn't know if it was some type of process, and it was. Pro Tools and, like, you know, electronic and software-based computers was what it was after the tape started going, before you laid it on wax. But now you could do it digitally. I asked my dad for that at 13. No. 14. No. 15. <laughs> no. <laughs> Desperately, he got it for me around 16. I was mastering it around 17 and utilizing it for church stuff, like putting thunder behind my pastor's preaching if he pro spoke about a valley or a war or try to find ways to use the uh, technological sound advancement that I was blessed with by my dad at 16 to do what my mom was making me do. And son, now you got this pro tool, but don't talk about no women. Don't talk about no bottles. And you're going to be talking about God. Mm -hmm. I don't want no curse word. Mm -hmm. And make sure that you creatively, creatively don't do that. Same note stuff. I right. said, okay, ma, I could do that. Mm -hmm. So I think that that's what set my values early. Mm -hmm. So even though I had a huge future and I probably would have been doing all types of music, my values were set based on me getting music for church, God being put into my heart in my gift and me promising the people who gave it to me that I wouldn't stray from that path. As I grew older, that got more and more difficult because I want to be more rebellious. I want to start echoing sounds that I hear, mm -hmm. but holding on to those values kept it unique and a special anointing on it. Well, yeah, I like so this, again, with the Molly. I like this conversation because of the fact they talk about you earned it. You know, man. because at thirteen they knew you were talented, but did they know? The, did you understand the value of this? Five hundred dollars or this six hundred dollar device? Because right, right, I always right. tell people, if you if you give somebody a car, let them loan it. Then guess what? They, 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 if they wreck it, they go, oh, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. But if they were tied to the damage of the wreck, then they have a different conversation when they come talk to you. Yeah, man. And so now at that early age, were there friends 
who started, I know it was tied to the church and you started seeing people react mm-hmm. to your beats, react to your music because you in gospel, man. Because, you know, the thing about it is if you're in rap, if you're in R&B, you know, right. you get, you get, you know, of R&B, you singing for the ladies. You know what I'm saying? Right, if you're in right. rap, you're in the street just, just doing rhymes for your crew. Who were you doing it for? My pastor gave me the opportunity to be minister of music and start playing at his church when I was 11. Now, I said I asked my dad for Pro Tools at 13, so I've already been singing as a minister of music and playing learning chords in the church for three years already on a Yamaha DX7. Now, that's as old a keyboard as you can get. <laughs> and big. And big, too. And big. <laughs> I'm blowing cartridges out trying to change in the middle. of the. It's not what I need. So I was a young musician coming in at the shift of a technological era. Uh-huh. Like synthesizers were growing into bigger stuff. Yes. When the churches just before I started playing in church, which was very early, were mostly organ. Mm-hmm. All right. So we didn't have an organ in that church. So the keyboard wasn't enough. So I wanted strings. I wanted all these different types of things. So that's what kind of set the tone. It was to please my pastor. It was to be able to show that I was ready for the leadership position that he give, gave me, even though I was so young. Mm-hmm. I anticipated for people to say I was unauthorized and should not be associated with such a position like minister of music. So I gave my all to it. I mm-hmm. gave my commitment. And it kind of gave me responsibility before I wanted friends. So now, even though I had friends and companions, I was, if I wasn't doing chorus, I was trying to make sure I got back to learn my Pro Tools because my dad wasn't going to buy me right. software that I didn't know how to use. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. now I have to read user books, manuals, and I became pretty obsessive and a bit of a nerd <laughs> over the technological part. And once I started bringing CDs to school, it was over. I'm saying it for the dances. I'm 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 doing the the national anthem pre-recorded over the I just was finding ways to use the Pro Tools and it became really awesome. But it didn't hit until the world heard it on MySpace, and that's where social media comes in at. Right. So my music was right on the curve of a shift, mm-hmm. and once everybody heard it online, because mm-hmm. Black Planet just died, mm-hmm. I was a MySpace artist. By the time they found Molly Music, I had my song "I Hate You," no music, mm-hmm. uh, all I have to give. And uh, I think forward on my MySpace page, and the rest is history. Well, history is, but is, has still given you uh, uh, love, you know, Grammy yes. with your boy Jonathan Mac Reynolds, who I had on the show. Uh, you know, working with artists like that because he's really creative. He's young, and uh, yeah. talk about collaborations because that's a key. Because you know, I've, I've, I've listened to writers and special producers mm-hmm. because they they're brought in for a talent. But they also have to be mature enough to understand who they're working with, but also yeah. strong enough to be able to get the finished product to the end end zone. So talk yeah. about when you when collaborations, the one you did with Jonathan McReynolds, which won a Grammy, by the way. Moving on. Thank you so much. It was such a gift to be able to hold that coming out of the box. And it represented what collaboration represents for me. Sacrifice. Everybody wants it to be them alone. Everybody wants to win a race because of how good they are. Uh, but so many things were going on and I just really wanted to help so many people. I noticed once I got finished acting inside of the like movie industry mm-hmm. that the most important investment was like the last $2 million that a movie needs. And people can come on as a final investor because a movie ran short on a $10 million budget or something and right. they give the final two and then it is the breaking point of it. That's what I started doing with my music. Jonathan had a whole album. The People album was killing. He had a whole campaign. But collaboration was just so we could bring our jetpacks together to get <laughs> over the air. Of right. course, we could do something effective in gospel, but can we put a dent in the world? And that was something we weren't planning to do. But the collaboration goes in depth. It was agreement from me and Jonathan and Spirit. But right. then it also was our teams. I'm with RCAI mm-hmm. and he is with E1. And those companies also collaborated for us to have the success that we had based on, you know, working the record, calling people. It was two labels collaborating. So I'm very proud of what Gospel Music did because we obtained this reward uh, or this award by working together. There's a lot of people who just simply don't do that in God. Well, you know, you're there at RCAI with my boy, Phil Thornton. Who I call a visionary. No. Hey, don't get me started on Phil. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that guy is awesome. And yeah. he's been grinding from the beginning. So I was so excited to see that his promotion finally came. Mm-hmm. So it's like Steve Nash. Oh, 
you have a team now that you're coaching. Can I play with y'all? Mm -hmm. I wasn't necessarily interested in functioning with the system this way, but if you're over it, I know God is involved, prayer is involved, mm -hmm. and I can have success, and it worked out. So well, I'm happy. To well, you know, the, 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 the beauty of you is just that there's a certain genuine level of conversation because, you know, this is this is not insulting. You know, a lot of people, they walk in, they you know their gospel. They just come in, they they, they they real churchy. You're you're Hallelujah, real, praise the Lord. It's a blessing to oh, be here today. Oh, oh, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. Which, 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 I, which I got that, I got that. But I really think, I really think, Molly, I can eat some barbecue with you. You know what I'm saying? I really think I can play some basketball with you. I you know can sit what I'm down saying? And, we can scream at the TV a little bit. You know what I'm saying? I really do believe that, man, because <laughs> that is that's part of your upbringing. You know, despite yes. the fact at 11 years old, you was given a leadership role, which is a mature mm -hmm. thing, and also can be something that can like pigeonhole a person's personality. But how mm -hmm. did you really maintain your personality, man, with all that pressure of an 11 year old talking to yes. adults, considered a gifted individual? Because you just don't slide yes. that on over there. But then your parents over there going, Really? Boy, take that trash out there. Boy, yes. boy, 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 if you don't clean up yes. your room, because that was happening at the house. So that really right. kept you straight, correct? Yes. And then coming up in Savannah, Georgia, it was happening outside the house. You can get whooped by anybody <laughs> in Georgia. You get what I'm saying? So Absolutely. it was a blessing because I'll sing. I'm 13 years old and the power of God falls at a at a, a meeting. Right. Um, And then I get spoken to by one of the elder women, mm -hmm. one of the grandmoms. Mm -hmm. And this is all she's going to say. She'll never get around to saying good job. Right. She said... <laughs> Don't forget where you come from now. <laughs> and that, that's, that means that she see me going play. Right, she right, forgot right, right. to tell me that, but she <laughs> let me know no matter what, that I needed to be humble. And I remember those people. Or they'll say, all right, keep doing what you're doing. Don't change nothing. They're going to ask you to do this, do that. Don't change nothing. Right. I'm like, yes, ma'am. You know, I'm right. going to stay that path. And I just remember those people who say, remember the little people when you get there. And it's cool because it's a bit, back and forth because you have some elite people who want to feel that they're around other pompous people. Right. Um, but that's just not the way that I'm bringing it. God brings all success and we're lucky to get whatever we get in the first place. And it's all about loving people. So right. that's the greatest wealth. Any money that I ever got came from somebody. Absolutely. You get what I mean? Absolutely. Hey, Molly, I'm talking to Molly Music, my man. Um, three uh, a Grammy Grammy win this year with uh, his collaboration moving on with Jonathan Mac Reynolds and then uh, some interview with Phil Thornton and then I just run through this list of you know all the artists from the label RCAI mm -hmm. which is based out of Nashville and I saw Molly Music three nominations mm -hmm. I said I got to get it it was just a couple a week and a half ago I said if, if, I said, it was I, crazy I've been it's, a, it's awesome I said I said, I got to get him on the show and talk about this because, <laughs> you know what I say? Because when you say the Stellar Awards, I see you because because we're going to talk about this year, but I want to go back in 2020 because that's when you're going to really tell me the story of, of how this happened for 2021. Yeah, but, you had to work through the obstacles of last year to get where we got. Absolutely. And so yes. this, those three nominations, how does that make you feel? You know, uh, just talk Ooh. about the steps and uh, of that process. Like you said, the team. Getting the 18, because yeah. we don't do this by ourselves. And sometimes we, we get out there, we feel like we by ourselves. But you yeah. had three nominations, Stellar Awards. Talk about that. Determination, perseverance, and faith. I can't necessarily say, like, in releasing it, like, oh man, this is locked up. It wasn't like that for me because there were so many business things that started to happen. This was my first project as an owner of K approved. ENT, which is, you know, my company, that's where I'm going to be releasing other artists so they don't have to endure the things that I had to endure to get where I am. Mm -hmm. So my attempt from being independent and not being signed anymore to now in this licensing situation with Phil Thor and Ron Hill over at RCAI, I wanted to create a label to when I saw the next Molly's and when I saw the next town and I could protect it and, mm -hmm. you know, harvest it and push it out. So the Book of Molly was my first project from that licensing thing and it was difficult financially paying producers yes. uh publishing uh getting clearances on any samples uh getting all musicians taken care of it was cool because it's it's a blessing on a small level but if you play piano on a john legend song how much money are you going to ask for at the end right. you get, you're not going right. to say 
no, it's okay. Just give me a hundred dollars. You're going to be trying to find out how to get enough money for the rest of your life because you played piano on a John Legend song. Answer points. So Answer think- points. <laughs> <laughs> I would love this to be a talent, but because then you're sitting over there just answering to somebody. To be able to make that commitment, paying taxes, you know, paying for paying value, then you get to understand yeah. that how this really works. How a Tyler Perry really works. I can assure you, Tyler yes. Perry knows everybody he's paying. Okay. How Will Packer, how all these Steve Harvey, all these people are uh, uh, Ava DuVernay, Oprah Winfrey. You're just yes. doing what they're doing. And believe me, they know who they pay. And they also know the, the, the pain and frustration of being an entrepreneur. So you went from a talent to an entrepreneur. And that's important because that allows you to collaborate right. and know what money you would do properly or what money Thank you, you should so pay. Thank you so much for noting that. That's so awesome for you to see and and catch because I can only hope that that is what happens because a lot of people still see me as a talent. But you can only go so far there without the proper team. And this is a, a huge step for me. So you're right online. And you can't really make too many changes for people, yourself, or the world from this the artist's position. So... It's good to like be in a position that you can make some things happen, not for yourself, but for the future. Well, you, as well. you know the thing about it, that's why that, that's why I created this show so I could talk to individuals like you, Marla, because 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 as a talent or an individual who buys tickets, or you can get caught up in the uh, showbiz or the show. Yes, and yes. it can make you believe that you can't do that, or they tell you you can't do that because it's so complicated. And yes. so I can assure you, when you was making this transition, it was a lot of, as they say, trepidation. Fear. Yes, that is. Uh, yeah. You don't go, uh, uh, am I going to make a mistake? I don't want to mess up. And then when you did it, I remember when I did a big, my first neighborhood awards back in Los Angeles by 2003. When I finished it, I realized, I said, I started crying because of the fact that all along I could have done this. Wow. But I had been told I couldn't do it because it was so hard to do. And so when I hear you saying, Man, it was a lot of stress. It was like, that's part of the process of walking through fire. Yeah. And you do it again and again and again. And guess what? It's not because it's easier, because you trust yourself. Right. And that's what we're trying to get at when I'm talking to you as a person who said, look, Rashawn, I won't be pigeonholed because I want to know what it feels like to do R&B music. I want to mm-hmm. know what it feels like to do rock music. I want to feel hip hop music because guess what? Then I understand my value. And that's all this yeah. conversation about is about your value. And the first time I met you, I always felt I was talking to a uniquely different individual because you value things differently. And now yeah. you tell me you've been doing this since you were 11 years old. I, I appreciate and respect you even more, man. I'm grateful for that. I was blessed to be able to have those responsibilities. And you just nailed it. I'm so honored that you've been uh, seeing and following what I've been able to do because I can only hope that it's that. A lot of times, you know, as you said, we think we're by ourselves and that people miss it. Mm -hmm. So it's uh, really cool to see. But all of the positions were necessary. The first one was a servant leader. My Mm -hmm. mother was doing a lot of the uh, management with Holly Carter. I was young. Mm -hmm. I had confidence in the music, but um, not necessarily confidence in the meeting room. So I wouldn't speak much. Mm -hmm. I was also directed and told not to speak much. However, I started noticing that at the end of the day, I had the final say. So if I had the (laughs) final say, I started trying to work my way into getting the first say. Mm -hmm. And, you know, versus (laughs) it kind of going all the way through and it me seeming like it's not that, but at the end of the day, that's the only way that I can keep it in God's hands. That's the right. only way that I can keep the integrity of my anointing clear. Right. If I wasn't in a situation where I can control these things, people will continue to say, even in churches, mm-hmm. Molly, we want you to sing, but don't sing this song. Don't say this. Don't be this. Don't act like this. Once I started recognizing and seeing that that's what was going to happen early in gospel, I knew it was time to get out because there was no way to be what I was without the housekeepers of the places I was going to sing at protecting their people. Right. And they protect their people from me. Right. So I'm like, well, I just got to get out so I could go ahead and be everything that God said. And then you guys won't have to worry about what you're telling me not to do. And it worked out in spite of a world of people, a whole wave of creative people. Mm -hmm. And it's caused me to not be able to stop even when the world stops. During the pandemic, I was visualizing myself as a Joseph. Like, okay, well, everybody may not be able to get the best of what they wanted or liked while everything was flowing, Mm -hmm. but they could at least get this wheat. Mm -hmm. They could at least get something. 
and uh, and I have it stored up. So how can I bring it out? I already have a album out. How can I release the more and partner with other people and keep singing? And it worked. We well, you know you, COVID shut down music, shut down our lives, shut down tour dates. Now we got new music. We got tour dates coming up. Tell us how 2021 is going to play itself out for Molly. Oh, man, it's, it's so <laughs> packed and stacked. And a lot of my colleagues are excited because they are saying that this is what they wanted. But during the pandemic, I recognized that I did not want to make my money on the road primarily. Mm -hmm. Maybe uh, when I was younger and all the stuff like that, and I get opportunities to sing and travel now because I really want to see my people and mm -hmm. I love the stage. Mm -hmm. um, however, as a sole, you know, commodity or a stream of income, I don't feel like it's the wave. Mm -hmm. uh, there's so many ways to make a thousand dollars, ten thousand dollars overnight. If right. you can get the education right. and look versus waiting a whole month, stressing your body and banging your body to gain five thousand dollars, you know, here, seven thousand dollars there. Um, sitting down forced me to say, OK, this is God's way of taking everybody's strongest thing from them. Mm -hmm. So this is a year for us to adopt and adapt new hobbies. And I used it to create new streams of income just in case the ones that closed never came back. So now I created five and then the five I had came back. Now it was 10 streams of income. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, it's a really crazy thing. And I wanted to make sure that the other five had nothing to do with music. So now when I sing, I primarily use the increase that I get from singing to tap into another entrepreneurial mind mm -hmm. to be able to buy stocks or invest mm -hmm. in juices or milk or something that the stores are buying mm -hmm. so that I'm making money without being great. Absolutely. You get what I'm saying? Well, you know, I, I get 100% because I, I'm, I'm, I look at the, I went back and I, and I told my uh, stockbroker, I said, no, 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 don't put me in a fund. I said, I'm going to tell you what I want yes. to buy. I picked out 10 stocks. That I said, these are the ones I want to buy. Oh, you know, no, See, no, no. I would have loved to have been in that money you know, you know, conversation. You know, you know, you know what I mean? Yeah, I said, I'm going to trust myself. And you know, yes. and just, I never trust myself. And so, but I want to close in saying this about you is that, you know, we've seen everybody as we go back live and then event, we've seen an over a groundswell of people wanting to see live events, you know, people yeah. concerts selling out and two or three shows, comedy show. I think this is going to be such a unique moment for you, Molly, because to be able, this is the anointing time, I think. For individuals like you to get out there, not only to deliver your music, but to hear people want to receive it. And I just think it's going to be a great year for you, man. And I, I respect so much what you've accomplished man. in the past. You got my hands <laughs> up, sir. <laughs> <laughs> you got my hands up. I receive it. I want to walk in it with uh, grace and um, heavenly anointing. I just don't want to take any credit for it because I can mess it up with human frustration, right. limitation, right. all this stuff like that. But I do feel like it's a blast of events. Yes. So I don't want to just keep saying it to everybody. This is the time for stories, plays, yes. 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 short, <laughs> short stuff, yeah, there conversations you go. Come like on. this on stage. It's time for people to, I guess, feel what it feels like to be around people again. Yes. And, um, and if we're creative in making events that are new, then we could just continue to that's what I'm talking about. On this that's, swell. that's all I'm talking about, Marley, because you know, because when you was talking about, you know, you know, you make five thousand, I know we got that, but the basis of what we do in gospel is emotion. It's driven yes. by opportunity, it's driven by a blessing. And the yes. fact that you are about to step out into the world and be received again, and people are about to understand the value of the Holy Spirit, my man. Yeah. My hands up because wow. Palms out, hands up, pointing at you, baby. Pointing at you, Molly Music. Man, I feel <laughs> what you're saying is so right. I had a conversation with Jonathan McReynolds. We're getting ready to do a Victory Lab album. Uh -huh. Just something for us together since God brought us to victory. Mm -hmm. And he was saying, Molly, some people are looking for you to take the mic and just sing it. Don't wait go. for nobody else. Don't do nothing else. We're looking to you. And it uh -huh. was really special for him to give me that moment. Uh, because sometimes as a leader... Or, uh, you know, somebody in authority position, you might not take the full power of the dominion that God gives for the sake of caring. But sometimes he just needs you mm -hmm. to do like Christ, mm -hmm. handle the work and let everybody be blessed. That's all, man. That's all I got to say to you, young brother.
because I'm glad you took the time to talk to me because I'll be following you as I always follow you and uh, feel blessed that I know you. Thank you for coming on this Money Making Conversation. This is an awesome opportunity again. I'm just as blessed as the first time. <laughs> I pray the people are. And man, um, I'm going to be looking to check back on you, man. I feel something on you this year too. <laughs> Thank you, sir. If you want to hear any of my interviews on Money Making Conversation, please, or, or watch them, you know, or hear them, please go to moneymakingconversation.com. I'm Rashawn McDonald. I am your host.